Greetings, Hunter. My name's Oscar Mikey. I'm a streamer and YouTuber, and I'm pleased to be working with Cabo and Modern Wolf to bring you this brief introduction into their new game, Zero Sievert. Zero Sievert is a tense top-down extraction shooter that challenges you to scavenge a procedurally generated wasteland, loot gear, and explore what's left of a devastated world. This is the Zero Sievert Bunker. It will be your home, where you'll accept quests, sell, buy, and craft gear, sleep to regain your strength, and build out a stash, which you can upgrade with specialized modules to help you on your adventures. Keeping your hunter well rested, fed, and hydrated is a constant struggle in the wasteland of Zero Seaver. Keep an eye on your energy, food, hydration, and radiation meters. Make sure they don't drop too low or you risk taking negative status effects that can slow you down, give you bleeds, and eventually kill you. So much radiation! Oh my god! <laughs> so thirsty! So hungry! Oh, oh, so heavy! Can't move! These are your inventory and gear slots. Your hunter can equip two weapons of any size, armor, a backpack, and headgear such as night vision, for example. The cell size of your inventory never changes. However, the carry limit of your equipped backpack will determine how much loot you can hold before becoming over-encumbered. There's plenty of beds for you to rest your hunter and pass time. You can pick any bed you want, and don't worry, none of the other hunters will get mad. The bunker is home to a handful of characters that will trade gear with you and give you quests. Some of them belong to different factions, and they will respond to you differently depending on your reputation with them. One of these factions is the Green Army. They're a group of soldiers equipped with sophisticated military hardware and are a force to be reckoned with. They've taken an entire quarter of the Zero Sievert bunker for themselves and will not let anybody enter until they prove themselves in the field. When you've gotten yourself squared away in the bunker, you've selected a backpack, a weapon, and its matching ammunition, then you're ready to enter the wasteland. Speak to the train conductor outside the bunker. He also gives out quests, but his train is your main mode of transportation between the bunker and the wasteland. The forest is the first available map in your journey, and this is where you'll complete your first handful of quests and prove yourself to the green army and your peers back at the bunker. When you step off the train, be sure to look at your map and find your extraction points. You must go to one of these areas to successfully leave the map and bring your loot and quest items back to the bunker. Next, make sure your weapons are loaded. If you buy a new weapon from a trader, it's empty until you equip it and press R to load it. When you're first starting out, you should try to keep your raids small. Don't get greedy, and stay away from any encounters you don't think you can win. Your number one priority should be extracting from the map with your loot. Even if you only pick up a few items in raid and extract with them, that's a few items in your stash that you didn't have before. Also, make sure you equip your medical items to your hotbar, and make sure that you use them after a gunfight. They're not going to do any good if they just sit in your inventory. If you're ever running low on ammo in raid, don't forget that you can unload enemy weapons and take their ammo for yourself. In your travels, you'll come across lootable containers that are physically close to each other. Walk up to the containers or corpses until you see two loot interactions over your hunter. When you see this, you can use your scroll wheel to select which container or corpse you want to loot. As you gain experience, you'll acquire more and more loot on your raids. To speed up the experience of transferring items, hold control and left click to quickly transfer items back and forth between your hunter and any given container. Looting fast is key in the dangerous wastelands of Zero Seaver. You've cut your teeth and are now a more experienced hunter. 
By now, the quest givers in the Zero Sievert Bunker have recognized your grit and efficiency in the field, and are asking you to complete more dangerous tasks. The wasteland is full of radioactive anomalies that destroyed the environment and mutated animals and human inhabitants of the land. These anomalies are incredibly radioactive and can kill you if you're not careful. Ow! Ow! Whoa, what is that? What even is that? Oh! Oh, stop it! Oh my god, please stop! However, they also spawn valuable crystals that you can harvest and turn in for your quests or sell for cash. Get close and use the G key to throw bolts around the area and locate the anomalies. Once you've found them, you can move past them and harvest the valuable crystals. Ammunition comes in different calibers to be used with their respective weapons. And under each caliber, there are various types that inflict different kinds of damage on your target. For example, under the 5.45 by 39 caliber, there are HP and BT ammo types. HP does more flesh damage to unarmored targets like ghouls, boars, and wolves. However, if you encounter a heavily armored target, BT will give you the extra penetration power you'll need to take that enemy down quickly. Be sure you have both types of bullets in your inventory, press the Y key, and use the scroll wheel to select which bullet you want. At a certain point, it becomes more efficient to craft your own ammo, food, and medical items, instead of buying them at high prices from the traders. When you're just starting out, you will be able to craft some basic medications and food items, but to gain access to more advanced recipes, you'll have to craft some stash modules like the ammo producer, which we'll talk about later. But like I said before, you are able to craft some basic bandages when you're just starting out. You can build a basic bandage that stops bleeds for three scrap medicine, And you can also craft a sterilized bandage, which stops one bleed and gives you health, with one purified water and three basic bandages. There are some basic crafting recipes for food and water as well to keep your character fed and hydrated. Go ahead and click on the item you want to craft and it'll show you the requisite materials in the window down below. The sandwiches require bread and meat, for example, and you can distill two dirty waters down to one clean water if you want. Make sure you keep your food and water intake topped up, because kilograms of your maximum carry weight get taken off with every level that you lose from your hunger and hydration. There are a couple of ways to repair armor and weapons. You can buy repair kits from the traders and use those to repair your weapons and armor, but they're incredibly expensive. A more practical way is to craft and install the workshop in your stash. Once you have the workshop installed, you can now repair all of your weapons and armor with scrap weapon parts and scrap materials. The amount of materials needed to repair a weapon or a piece of armor will vary depending on its durability, but this is a very cheap and effective way to repair your gear. If you're the kind of person that likes to keep close track of progression in your games, your personal device in Zero Secret has a page with all that data there for you. Press J to open up your personal device, and click on the icon that looks like a silhouette of a person. This is where you can see your current level's progress, the amount of XP you have and the amount of XP you need to get to the next level, plus all kinds of stats on your current progress in the game. These include things like how many chests you've opened, how many monsters you've killed, how many bandits you've killed, and lots, lots more. Also, at the end of each raid, you'll get an overview screen showing you how much XP you made in that raid and an estimate of the value of all the loot you're taking out. Your stash is empty from the very beginning. It's pretty bland and boring, so why don't we craft a few modules to put in there and dress it up a little bit. Make sure you've got all the requisite building materials necessary for building your chosen module. Go to your crafting table, click the Modules tab, select the module you want to build and press the Craft button. Once you craft it, it'll appear as a box in your inventory. From here, you need to decide where you want to place it. Press J to open your companion device, and select the icon that looks like a house. Here, you can decide where you want to place any given module. The squares with the dotted lines represent open slots in your stash for module upgrades. Click on one, then click on the icon that matches the module you just crafted. 
Then click and hold at the top of the screen until the progress bar fills all the way. Finally, go back into your inventory, right-click the module you just made, and click Use. Each module gives different benefits to your hunter, and as soon as they're built, you'll be able to take advantage of them. There are all kinds of modules you can install. There are storage expansions that give you more boxes to put loot in, there's an infirmary that gives you the ability to craft more advanced medications, and it also grants you passive bonuses to your health. Sleeping in your own bed will heal your wounds and level up your skills faster. The kitchen allows you to craft more advanced meals, and there are all kinds of other modules you can build with various different benefits to your hunter. It's up to you to decide which ones you value most. Customizing your weapon to make it match your playstyle will keep you alive, but it's also just really fun. Bring your weapon into the crafting bench and click the Mod Weapon button to bring you to the Weapon Customization screen. Here you'll be presented with a profile shot of the weapon with all its current attachments installed, as well as buttons corresponding to all of its attachment slots. Click on an attachment slot, and you'll be presented with the current attachment, as well as all the compatible attachments you have in your stash, or in your hunter's backpack. To install a different attachment, simply click the Remove button to uninstall the current one, then click on the attachment you wish to install. The same process applies to accessories like lights, lasers, and foregrips. Once lights and lasers are installed on your weapon, press T and L respectively to toggle them on or off. Eventually, you'll feel brave enough to venture out farther than the forest, to explore new areas, fight tougher enemies, and retrieve more valuable loot. The industrial area is home to many horribly mutated creatures, thanks to the intense radioactivity in the area, but it's also occupied by another faction called the Crimson Corporation. The Crimson Corporation is another militarized faction like the Green Army, but they are even more dangerous. They also carry advanced military hardware, and are very dangerous to get in a fight with. But they may also have tasks for you if you talk to their leader. Thank you for watching, Hunter. I hope this short intro to Zero Sievert has prepared you for your journey into the wasteland. Make sure to join the Zero Sievert Discord, and subscribe to them on YouTube for everything related to Zero Sievert. My name's Oscar Mikey, thanks again for watching, and good luck out there in the wasteland, Hunter.